الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله والصفي هو الخير وخليل ارسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا اما بعد عن علي رضي الله تعالى عنه وعاش before I actually begin the hadith we have to understand something when it comes to conflict resolution and that is that there's two sides to every story if you want to resolve a conflict then the first thing that you have to understand is that there's always two sides actually three sides to every story Right. There's his side, her side, and then there's the actual truth of the matter. Because when people come to you for advice or to uh, intervene in a situation, they're only going to give you their perspective. They're going to give you their perspective. Rarely does a person, is a person fair and just in pre presenting their argument and presenting their um their case even if they are fair and just sometimes the way that they articulate their own situation may be such that you begin to incline towards that person as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said innakum la takhtasimuna ilayya wa la'alla ba'dukum yakunu alhan fi hujjatihi min ba'd fa man qadaytu lahu haqqa akhihi fala ta'khudhuhu fa inna ma ya'khudhuhu the Prophet said that two of you may come to me um, arguing or debating about an issue. He said, and perhaps one of you is more articulate in your argument than the other one. So it shows you that sometimes when two people come to you for to intervene, one of them sometimes can be more articulate than the other and you might find yourself inclining towards the other one. He said, so whoever I judge, and he said, وَأَقْضِي عَلَى نَحْوِ مَا أَسْمَعْ He said, and I only judge in the situation based upon what I hear. He said, so if I judge in the situation giving you the right of your brother, then don't take it. Don't take it because indeed you're only taking a portion of the, of the hellfire. Right? He put the onus, the responsibility on the individual. You know whether or not the person is inclining towards you because you are articulate or because you are right. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Ba'athani Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila qawmin dhi asnan. Faqala li, idha jaaka al-khasmani, fala tasma' min al-awwal hatta tasma' min al-akhar, fa innahu sayuyassir lak. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent me to a people um, as a young man to go and be a judge. Here again, leadership development, preparing the youth to be leaders. He sent Ali anhu to go and judge because of the knowledge that he had of Islam, to go and to be intervene and to uh, assist these group of people in judging their affairs. And he gave him some advice. He said, إِذَا جَاءَكَ خَسْمَانِ He said, if two people come to you arguing or debating an issue. He said, فَلَا تَسْمَعْ مِنَ الْأَوَّلْ حَتَّى تَسْمَعْ مِنَ الْآخَرِ He said, then don't give ear to the, to the first one until you have also given ear to the second one. Don't listen to the argument of one and dismiss the argument of the other. Listen to both of them. He said, فَإِنَّهُ سَيُّ لَكَ He said, because this will make it easy for you to discern who was right and who was wrong to sift through the situation and get to the bottom of it. A lot of times a person will come to you and say such and such did this, such and such did that, and immediately namilu ilayhim, we will start to incline towards them without hearing from the other person. The first thing that you give a believer in this deen is husnul dhan. We give them a good opinion. We give them the benefit of the doubt until all of the affairs are clear to us. But a lot of times with our situations, the reason why we end up 
exacerbating conflict is because we'll hear from one person and we won't, we've already made our minds up so it makes no difference whether the second person comes to us or not. We do this with our children. Imams sometimes do this with marriage counseling. The woman comes into the office, she's crying, she's emotional, you are sympathetic, you're empathetic, you listen to her, you hear her out, and you've already in your mind made the man a criminal. The man is already guilty. You haven't even heard from him yet, but your heart has already inclined. The woman has already won your heart over because of her tears, because of her crying, because of her, you know, the sympathy that you have for her. Sympathy is not an issue when it comes to judging between two people, judging between haq and batil. It's not about atifa. It's not about sympathy. It's not about empathy, how you feel about the person and how the person has made you feel in that moment. If we were to judge, you know what I mean, situations based upon how we felt about a person in that very moment, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have had mercy on Fir'aun. <laughs> When Fir'aun, uh, Jibreel said, if you could only see me, Muhammad, when I was stuffing dirt into the mouth of Fir'aun out of fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Arham al-Rahimeen, would still have mercy upon him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who al haq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the truth. And he judges in a situation based upon full justice. And it's not about sympathy, it's not about how we feel about someone at that moment. It's about the haq and it's about what is not haq. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told Ali ibn Abi Talib, لا تسمع من الأول حتى تسمع من الآخر Don't listen to the first one. I won't hear the first one out until you have heard the second one out. Until you have heard from the other one. فَإِنَّهُ سَيَيَسِّرُ لَكَ Then it will make it easy for you to judge the situation. Ali رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said, فَمَا زِلْتُ قَاضِيًا عَلَى هَذَا مُنْذُ ذَاكَ الْيَوْمِ Ali anhu, he said, I have never ceased to remain judging people's affairs and judging between people's situation, conflict, and that method, using that same method. And then sometimes there are situations where there are qara'in. There are matters that we know that we can actually connect to the situation to know whether or not, the per whether or not we actually need to hear from the second person or not. But the point that I'm making is that you do not hear from the first, because when you hear the first person's argument and you accept that, then you no longer want to hear the second argument. Similar to the situation of Aisha anha, when they were accusing her of adultery. And the word has spread throughout Medina that Aisha anha was guilty of this or engaged in this behavior. And even the Prophet وسلم, was begin to become affected by what he was hearing. Not that he believed it, but it began to create some, you know, some, some uncomfortable feelings inside of him. Aisha said that the Prophet وسلم, his behavior changed. He used to come to me and he used to always ask me, how you doing this morning? How's everything? Kayfa anti? Kayfa asbahti? How are you doing this morning? How are you? She said, but during this ordeal, his behavior changed. And she said to her mother, as her mother said to her, Aisha, if you did it, then just tell us that you did it and make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine being in a situation where people are accusing you of something and everybody seems to be inclining towards one side of the argument and you know that you're right. You know that you're right and no one will listen to you. Can you imagine the frustration? Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Wallahi law akhbaratukum anni anni lam af'alhu la tusaddikunani. Wallahu akhbaratukum anni fa'altuhu la tusaddikunani. Famali illa an akulu kama kala ya'akub alayhi salam. Fa sabrun jameel. Fa sabrun jameel. She said, Wallahi, if I told you all that I didn't do it, you're never going to believe me. If I told you that I didn't do it, you will never believe me. She said, and if I told you I did do it, then you would believe me. She said, I have no other recourse than to say to you what Prophet Yaqub said, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ And a beautiful patience that I will exert. The only thing left for me is a beautiful patience. And this was because people begin to incline towards one side of the argument as opposed to hearing from the other side equally. And then, as I said, there are sometimes situations where you may not need to hear from the other side. The Quran and other matters that you know about the person or about the situation, you can kind of connect the dots 
and make out the situation. As Hen, she came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and she said, Ya Rasulullah, in the Aba Sufyan, Rajulun Shahih, Yani Ashaddu al Bukhul, Wala Yu'atini, Ma Yakfini, Wa Waladi. Fakala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khudi min Madihi, Ma Yakfiki, Wa Waladi. Walam Yasma' min Abi Sufyan, Liana Hu min al Qara'in, Ya'arif and Hakikat al Amr. Hen, she came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hind, the wife of Abu Sufyan. She came to the Prophet ﷺ complaining. She said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, my husband Abu Sufyan is a stingy man and he doesn't give me what is sufficient for me and my children. The Prophet ﷺ said, Take from his wealth, take from his money what is sufficient for you and your children. And he never went and listened to Abu Sufyan's side of the story simply because, as the scholars mentioned, Possibly the Quran, uh, there was Karina, there were Quran, there were other matters that pointed to the fact that she's actually telling the truth. Maybe the Prophet Wasallam knew that Abu Sufyan was actually stingy. And so therefore it wasn't a need for him to go back and to, you know, ask him whether or not this is true. He already knew the type of person that Abu Sufyan was, so therefore it wasn't a need to go back and listen to the, to the second person like you heard from the first person. And these are things that we can use with our children. Sometimes a child may come to you and say, Muhammad did this, Abdullah did this, Abdurrahman did this. And you know, sometimes we know Abdurrahman does that. <laughs> we know Abdullah does that, right? Maybe he didn't do it in this occasion, but we know that he has done that in the past. And so therefore, you know, it may help us to, you know, judge in the situation fairly. And this is another piece towards uh, conflict resolution in our deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam atasliman kathira wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.